They've had a terrible time. They've been under tremendous stress. Now it seems the Russian mission controllers are deciding that for this crew, enough's enough. The mission director in Moscow made the announcement earlier today. It seems that the spacewalk will probably not take place according to schedule, and it's likely it will be down to the new crew who will undertake the mission. When the mere commander, Tsibiliev, on the right developed heart trouble, it seemed that Michael Fohl would have to do the spacewalk into the damaged Spectre module to repair cables. Now it's likely the job will be left to a new crew due up next month. They seem very relaxed about visiting a space station dogged with trouble. They've rehearsed what needs to be done in the water, so will be better prepared. But Mir is so short of power, it's likely that only two of the three men will go. The Frenchman will probably be left behind. A reduced crew will put less strain on precious life support systems on Mir. Though Mir is in a mess, the Russians are turning it to their advantage. This situation with the emergency in space, with the, this collision, uh, will help us to uh, find to, 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 to gather much more experience uh, with the repair work, with the ex extravehicular activities and uh, so on. The Mir space station is now stable and pointing to the sun. Later today, the gyroscopes, which keep it that way, will be powered up. The crew are now on a rest day, exhausted after yet another potentially life-threatening experience. Well, the crew, the crew's fine. They're letting them rest today, giving them the day off to just relax. They'll, of course, continue to bring up systems, but uh, the crew's doing OK. The crew may be doing fine. The spacecraft clearly isn't. And many experts still say it's time to call it a day. James Wilkinson, BBC News. Well, a short time ago, I spoke to our correspondent, Rob Parsons, who's at Mission Control just outside Moscow. He told me that the problems aboard Mir had taken their toll on the crew. Well, I think it's just after, after yesterday, which was really extremely stressful for them. At one stage, the, the ship appeared to be completely out of control. It has been decided that they do need some rest. After all, they've been living in appalling conditions for over three weeks now. Uh, and, and also, a decision has to be taken about which crew is to do the repairs. That is, the crew that's, apparent, that's on uh, Mir at the moment, or the crew that's still on Earth, waiting to go up to Mir uh, on the 7th of uh, August. What, what do they, is the answer to the charge that actually they're compromising the safety of these three individuals? That if this was an American uh, spaceship, the demand would have been for them to be brought back to Earth immediately? Well, the Russians uh, deny that categorically. They say the situation is in control completely, that there is an escape capsule there. If they do need to get away, they can get away very quickly. There's plenty of fuel. Uh, and that in the meantime, it's worth their while staying on there to see whether they can rescue the station so that further scientific experiments can be carried on by future crews. And very briefly, Rob, when do you think the uh, next crew will be going up to relieve those who are stuck on Mir at the moment? Well, it's not absolutely clear at the moment. A, a decision still has to be taken. Uh, but the betting seems to be that uh, the, the, the crew on Earth at the moment will be leaving round about the 5th of August and probably arriving at Mir on the 7th of August. Rob Parsons, thank you very much indeed. Detectives investigating the murders of Lynn and... A frightening experience yesterday when they lost almost all power for the second time since the collision, the astronauts have been given the day off. Overnight, using small jet thrusters, they managed to point the space station's solar panels to the sun to charge up their batteries, and they're now almost back to where they were before one of them accidentally pulled the plug. This morning, the Russian mission director, Vladimir Soloviev, said the spacewalk into the Spectre module to repair damaged cables would probably be left to the new crew due up next month. But this afternoon, NASA said the final decision won't be taken until Monday. Michael Fohl could still go. The Russians have not made that decision yet. There is lots of speculation, and I know there's lots of reports in the press that, that, uh, that this is a done deal, but that's not true. Uh, the decision, final decision will not be made until Monday when their management has a, time, has a chance to assess the entire situation. There are worries about the mental health of the crew, and especially of the commander on the right who has heart trouble. Uh, right now, uh, we don't have any indication that would say that he cannot continue to function as a commander, and, and uh, my counterparts have assured me that they have confidence that the crew can continue to do what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis with, uh, with no problem. If repairs do have to wait for a new crew, there would be advantages. They've rehearsed what to do on Earth, and they'd be fresh. But there's a downside. 
If the cables aren't already connected before they arrive, Mir won't have enough power to support three additional astronauts. It's likely one, the Frenchman, will be left behind. This morning, the NASA experts who are actually in Moscow were rather laid back about the current crew's health. Well, the crew, the crew's fine. They're letting them rest today, giving them the day off to just relax. They'll, of course, continue to bring up systems, but uh, the crew's doing okay. The crew may be doing okay, the spacecraft clearly isn't, and many experts still say it's time to call it a day. James Wilkinson, BBC News. The Prime Minister is in Wales.